with Hanabi and Aman getting a new series skin to Jujutsu Kaisen event coming back. Not only that, the KOF third series will be featuring unique ID too. Hi guys, Kazuki here and in this video we are going to talk about patch note 1.8.76 and everything that it came up with. Before we dive into today's video, I need to share something with you all. Just the other night, after finishing work at 8.30pm, new patch note dropped at 9. Without hesitation, we were back at it, gearing up for another full night work. Despite this, 64.1% of you watching unsubscribed. It's okay, but subscribing would mean a lot to us. It supports our round-the-clock efforts and ensures you never miss crucial Mobile Legends updates. Hitting that subscribe button helps keeps us going. Now let's move on to all the hero adjustments. First on the list is Zuzin and she is receiving a major nerf. Her mobility and control have been reduced significantly. Her attributes have been nerfed. Movement speed decreased from 255 to 245. Skill 1 Soul Snare Stake application was reduced from 3 to 1. The skill 2's base damage adjusted to 50 to 150 from 70 to 145. And finally, the ultimate's dash distance was reduced by 20%. Now let's move on to Masha. Masha has overall been adjusted again. Her skill 1's passive damage based on maximum HP increased to flat 2% active damage, reduced to 2-4% from 3-6%. The ultimate has also been adjusted. Base damage increased to 400-600 to with the damage bonus from extra physical attack increased to 220%. Next up is Minotaur with his overall nerf. Skill 2's basic and HP region reduced significantly, making him less formidable against multi-hit basic attacks. His basic region is decreased by 40 in the early and late games. The magic power bonus has also been reduced by 40. He also now recovers HP equal to 200 to 450 plus 100% of total magic power when hit by an enemy hero's basic attack. Now let's check out Lolita. She overall has received an adjustment for better shielding and skill effectiveness. Her passive shield value and magic power contribution increased, but maximum stakes reduced and the trigger interval doubled. Her skill 1's cooldown is now flat 10 seconds, is reduced by 25 in the late game. Her skill 2's cooldown has been increased by 3.5 seconds in the late game. Now let's move on to Chip. Looks like Chip doesn't want to walk, so developers have decided to buff his special skill and skill 1. His skill 1's damage is increased by 30 plus 1% of maximum target's HP. The special skill cooldown half to 20 seconds, offering more dynamic gameplay options. Harith has received an overall nerf. The base damage of his skill 1 has been reduced by 1 in the early game and 41 in the late game and the total magic power has also been reduced by 9. Let's move on to Edith who has been buffed. The ultimate now has increased hybrid defense conversion to magic power, enhancing her damage output. Let's move on to Hayabusa who has received an overall buff. Ultimate now allows for retribution uses, aligning his capabilities with Ling and Lancelot. Next up is Julian with his buff. His passive enhanced basic attack's magic power bonus increased, boosting his damage output. Enhanced basic attack's magic power has been increased by 10%. Now let's move to Esmeralda. Her physical defense growth has been buffed by 3 and her magic defense growth has increased by 1.5. And finally, we have Carmilla with her overall adjustment. 
adjusted sizes of crimson flower skill and basic attacks for consistency in hitting targets. Moscow Infernal Vim Lord Recharge Faces are almost here. And I know you need that low unique ID even though it's silver. But don't worry, Papa Gazuki is here with a pre-order event for you to get your diamonds as soon as the recharge faces are live. But that's not it, if you pre-order now, you will be able to win 3,900 K0 coins. The event is coming on the 13th, hurry up, there isn't much time left. Moving on to Battlefield Adjustments. First up, the Vorex gets significant buff, becoming a go-to choice for skill-based heroes looking for early game sustainability. The developers have decided to merge some of the Bloodlust X's attributes into the War X. The physical attack state sees a jump from 25 to 35, while maximum HP is slightly reduced from 550 to 400. Plus it now boasts a 12% spell vamp to keep you in the fight longer. Okay. However, its unique passive, Fighting Spirit, has been nerfed. Removing spell vamp from stakes. Moving on to Queen's Wing, which has been adjusted to better fit the current equipment ecosystem. The spell vamp has been reduced from 15% to 10%, making it slightly less potent. But in good news, the cost has been reduced to 2250 from 2550, making it more accessible early on. The Malefic Gun receives a hearty buff. Its physical attack is boosted to 50 from 30. The active skill Malefic Energy now increases your attack range for 3 seconds, up from 2 seconds. And its cooldown is drastically reduced to 35 seconds. The unique passive G also gets a buff, increasing the speed boost from 10% to 15%. For those targeting high HP heroes, the Wishing Lantern just got a lot more appealing. Its unique passive Seeker now deals magic damage equal to 6% of the target's current HP, up from a flat 1% of maximum HP. Legendary. Blood Wings also sees a buff. The cooldown reduction for its unique passive guard dropped from 30 seconds to just 20 seconds, allowing for more frequent use in critical moments. This now seems like a go-to item for all the mage users out there. And for the last item, we have the Great Dragon Spear. Its speed boost has been doubled from 15% to 30% under its unique passive Supreme Warrior, making it a formidable choice for those looking to zip around the battlefield. In battlefield adjustments, Scavenger Crabs have been tweaked for ease and fun. They will now drop one of each EXP scrolls and gold, which will automatically fly to the killer. No more annoying pickup from now on. Let's see some bug fixes. An issue where the area affected by Balric's ultimate didn't match its effect has now been fixed. An issue where the spell vamp ratios of Lunox's Cosmic Fusion and her ultimate in chaos form differed from the descriptions has now been fixed. Some heroes' default battle setup have been enhanced for a better starting point in matches. And lastly, the description of the war cry and temporal rain talents has been improved. Moving on to weekly free heroes. The weekly free heroes from 12th of April till 19th of April are as follows. The extra free heroes for the Starlet members are as follows. Let's move on to surveys. Guys, we finally have the surveys for Claude's upcoming M6 skin. This is the design one. In this design, looks like Claude and Dexter have stepped right out of a high action video game or comic. They have got this spiky blue hair that hard to miss and are dressed in armor. That's all sharp edges and neon blues and pinks. The gun they are holding isn't your ordinary weapon. Next, let's move on to design two. In this design, Claude looks sharp in the golden and purple outfit, with his hairstyle in spikes that match his daring look. He got this confident stance like he's ready for whatever comes his way. And then there's Dexter, his monkey pal perched on his shoulder, adding a bit of mystery to the duo. This one has Yuzong vibes going on.
And finally, let's move on to design 3. Clothes back again, this time in an outfit that's a mix of dark purples and blacks with flames licking up the edges. His white hairs got the same cool spiky look. Dexter's hanging on his shoulder, looking fierce with a little gun in hand. They both mean business and looks like they are on a mission, ready to take on whatever's coming their way with style. Now let's move on to the other updates. The Care Phase 3 is finally coming to come out and we finally have some splash art for them. First we have Terry Bogart as Paquito. Then we have Valir as Kyo Kusanagi. And finally we have Masha as Mai Shuranoe. But not just that, we have more new news KOF event is also going features. The golden tag and the silver tag unique ID system. Moontoon is ready to milk money again. Next, we have new skin series coming. It's going to be called the Pro Q series and it's going to feature two new skins for Aman and Hanabi. It's going to be similar to Mist Vendors because we see Beast being featured here. Granger and Hayabusa's Exorcist are expected to be released around May. We have already made a video featuring them and 4 more new skin skill effects. Go and check them out. Next, we have the portrait for Ruby's new special skin. We also have the portrait for next month's Starlight Nolan. And this will be its two painted skins. This will be its sacred statue. Next, we have the portrait of Khalid's upcoming epic skin. And finally, we have the reworked sacred statue of Kaja and Helcurt. And here's the intro of Revamp Helcurt coming on the 24th of April. Lastly, the JJK event is returning on the 8th of June with Yin JJK's ultimate being revamped. So are you excited about this event? Happy with Anabi and Aman getting a new series? Share your thoughts down below. That will be all for this video. Thank you guys for watching. Keep supporting Kazuki Official.